how the adults contribute to a lot of the mental, emotional um, issues that kids have yep. and how we contribute to it. And I'm going to say, I'm going to say we, we. No, I because think, as you know, yeah. as an adult, you know, as a parent, yeah. as a parent and a teacher, <laughs> you know, I see the things that I've done where I'm like, oh, like this has contributed to where he yep. is right now. Yep. <laughs> Hello! Hi! <laughs> Welcome to Drama Deep Dive, and you'll see on the screen we actually have a K-pop song, not a drama, because we're gonna, we're gonna mash a bunch of things together that yes. all follow a theme today. Um, and our theme is education. Yes. Uh, if you've watched some of our other videos, you might know that we are both educators. Mm -hmm. uh, we have had different experiences, but between us we've had like... Yes. I'd say the gamut of American education experiences, Pretty much so. whether it's through when we, where we went to school or where we've taught or worked. So yep. we've seen a lot. So how many years have you been in schools for um, education? I will say. 20 years. Yep. yep. And I'm going, I'm on 13, some of it in schools, some of it in out of school education related work. Yeah. So uh, we, between the two of us, have a lot of experience in this area. And um, from private schools to public schools to charter schools. To all of them. We've gone through it all. <laughs> Rural, yep. urban. Everything. Suburban. <laughs> yeah. um, so we probably will have a lot to say. Um, and what brought this up is, I'll actually let you say what brought this on. So it started with uh, Moments at 18, um, just looking at that whole um, educational system. And I think what I got out of it is just looking at it from the adult's point of view and it just brought around like very strong emotions with me and then recently I finished Sky Castle and that just exploded and I was like oh I want to do something about education on our um, channel and I when I watched moments of 18 and I did do a recap this morning like I refreshed my memory because it's been a while um, that also made me super emotional and yeah. I just watched Sky Castle to prepare for this <laughs> <laughs> Because I'll be honest, I wasn't in love with Sky Castle when I tried to watch it previously. But interestingly, that one didn't make me as emotional. And we'll talk about that. I'm, I, I'm not sure why. Maybe we're talking about it today will help me know why. Uh, but the other thing that came to mind, because I am an ARMY, she is a new newbie ARMY, is this song, Bepse, by BTS, which... Mm -hmm. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to watch the explain and then a performance of it. Okay. It, he'll explain it, but this is like, to me... The BTS, BTS's music has always been political and has always had messages about their beliefs on Korean culture. Within that, this one to me is the most like straightforward, we're saying what we think about this, and okay. it's about a lot of the themes in Sky Castle and Moments of Anxiety. Right. So, um, and Joyce did tell me that this was um, RM, aka Kim and Jung, so I'd like to say their names as well. Um, that this is one of his favorite shows. And so I was very intrigued. Yes. As oh, Sky Castle. Why, yes, yes. Yes. Why Sky Castle was one of his um, favorite shows. And so I kind of kept telling her, I see why this is his favorite. <laughs> so. so we'll get right into it. This is DKT, T, DK, DK TV. I think that's the whole thing. Um, which is my favorite Explained series. I know there are other ones out there. I have watched some other ones. I like the way he explains things. Um, so he's going to explain some of the cultural nuance in the lyrics that we wouldn't understand okay. because we speak English as a first language. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. In light of BTS's new comeback, we are taking a look at their fiercest and most political song, Pepsi. <laughs> It means when you try to do something that's out of your reach, okay. out of your capabilities. <laughs> I was like, what does what that mean? Okay. This is why this is why I'm having you watch the explain first. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. And he breaks it down like line Good. by line. So Good. it's like very Good. effective. Good. Uh, then you will likely fail. Crow tits or Pepsi have short legs, but storks little birds. have oh, very yeah. long legs. Mm -hmm. have so obviously a crow tit trying to catch up to a stork mm -hmm. will likely fail. Here the storks are referring to people in power, the big companies, conglomerates, and older generations. And in this video, I will focus on the last meaning of older generations uh, because the previous two meanings have been covered a lot by other explanations. Here, BTS is using crotids as a metaphor for the younger generation or the millennials of South Korea. They are trying very, very hard to catch up with their parents' generation 
uh, the baby boomers or the storks. Uh, they also use another metaphor of teacher to refer to the uh, older generation who are born with a golden spoon. They say this because during the ages of the baby boomers in South Korea, they were experiencing huge economic growth and it was extremely easy like to get jobs, well. get housing, and stuff like that. But the economy in South Korea is now at its maturing stages, and the side effects of ultra-fast economic growth have boomerang to haunt the current generation. Yeah. Currently, the millennials are facing extremely high pricing of <laughs> houses, as well as high... Dis- yeah, it's really it's similar. Just, yeah. it's, it's really similar mm-hmm. to American ec- economic systems and things, too. Right. So, yeah, it's definitely interesting, right? Very. Parity between the rich and the poor, and also extreme all-time high youth unemployment. In this verse, BTS addresses the social injustices that millennials commonly face in Korean society. For example, passion pay. This is a very common practice in Korean society where companies basically pay young workers below minimum wage or Uh, nothing at all in return for experience. This reminds me of startup, of them actually Mm -hmm. saying that you're only like paying me very little because I don't have that experience or because I'm young. I won't say much about this because people from my job could watch this, but this, I've seen this in my current job where they offer internships right? and they call an internship, it's a whole job. And it's, you know, they say you're getting experience and then they'll pay you right? like for it. Um, And I understand that that's part of a system. Right, but But still. When these kids are in debt from school, it's like, But it's the same. how do they pay it off if they never can? It's the same with us as teachers, if we, when we did our teacher. um, Yeah, like student teaching, teaching, yeah. yeah. The company's logic is because they are offering a job and an experience that many young people have passion for, they are the ones at, that are actually doing the service for oh. the young people. Yep. And mm-hmm. pose is another newly made word that is used to describe the millennials of this decade. They are a generation that have basically given up what many consider to be basic human rights and wants because of extremely high youth unemployment rates and also very low wages compared to living costs. We have many different variations of Empo Sede to describe the millennials of South Korea. It originally started from Sampo Sede, which is used to describe the millennials that have given up dating, marrying, and giving birth due to economic instability. Then it evolved to Opo Sede, which added giving up employment and buying your own house. And then it evolved into Chilpo Sede, which added human relationships and hope. Now the word Again, something that we're seeing in American culture, and it's not even just in American culture. When we went to Africa for our um, our uh, Fulbright uh, scholarship thing, they talked about it in Mauritius. It's the same thing that's happening there as well, where the um, percentage of younger people who are getting married and having children is dropped so Mm -hmm. dramatically that they're nervous about what will it look like when the older generation starts to die out. Yep. Hmm. Empo Sede is most commonly used because they have basically given up all their dreams and hope. <laughs> in these lines, BTS talks about their want to change the system. Mm-hmm. The word Chongsang in the last lines has a double meaning. First, it means normal, and second, it means top. So basically, not only is BTS talking about how this is not a normal situation, society is sick, but also <laughs> they are saying we are not at the top yet and we have to push further. This, this is my favorite lines, I think. I love this whole song lyrically. Mm-hmm. I think uh, this part about effort always gets me. Mm-hmm. But this also kind of speaks to even like the whole Black Lives Matter movement in Mm -hmm. looking at um, what the constant argument is within black society is that we were never given a chance. And to keep saying that you can pull yourself up by your own bootstraps, even though when you do it, you still are not starting off at the same playing field as your white counterparts. It's this. It's a stork in a website, right? Like it's it's. Mm -hmm. 
literally trying to catch up with something that's un- right. uneven, right? It's right. like starting off on an uneven. Yep. Uh, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Mind you. Sorry, now I'm going to take this metaphor a different way, right? Mm-hmm. The other thing is, though, like, storks can't fly. Right. But Bepsay probably can, right? Mm-hmm. So if the society looked at things differently, mm-hmm. they could be even. Right. But because it's valued to have the longer legs, right. the stork would win, right? But if it was valued to just get somewhere, no matter how you got there, like, no matter what your process was, right. they might be even because a Bepsay could fly mm-hmm. and a stork could walk. But it goes back to... <laughs> just say. And I think we're gonna, I'm going to talk about it a little bit more when we get into the session, yeah. is even looking at right now during COVID, who has kept us afloat? And it's been the people who are at the quote-unquote bottom. Yep. So. Yep. Mm. Here, Big Chess addresses how the older generation blames the millennials for their <laughs> struggles, saying that it is due to a lack of effort. The word noryok is pronounced noryok by BTS. And <laughs> this is a very commonly used internet slang among millennials to sarcastically describe how the older generation mm-hmm blames them for the lack of effort. Mm -hmm. Baby boomers often neglect the fact how society is completely different now compared to when they were growing up. And also the economic situation is completely different. Mm -hmm. They also neglect the fact that a lot of the economic problems that these millennials face today were in fact caused by baby boomers. For example, prices that are extremely high so that millennials have basically given up buying their houses. These were driven up by baby boomers buying multiple houses yep. in, in speculation and for investment purposes. Yet many baby boomers simply neglect the fact and tell the millennials that they should try harder, work harder, so that you can perhaps buy a house 20 years later. just simply seem like a cry for help, a call for a helping hand. However, the word Pepsia in the very last line is a very clever play on words. Basically, this word would sound like a curse word to the Korean ear. It sounds very, very similar to Shipsia or Kesia, which are both very serious curse words in South Korea. So not only are they crying for help, and not only are they asking the protests to unite, but they are also calling the old generations <laughs> there, there it is okay yeah uh everything he says it's, <laughs> it's it, right out right it, it is and once again it's not even <laughs> just watch the performance it's not even just with the Korean society. We're nah. seeing the same thing in America. Like, the ex- yeah. exact same thing. And to your point about, like, Black Lives Matter movement, I think that's why their music resonates with a lot of people of color, not right. just Asian Americans or Asian mm-hmm. people. Just people right? of color. People of color, in general, mm-hmm. understand a lot of this, right? right. And, and Even in India, like, I know that's right. one of the things, like, the caste system is a big thing in yeah. India. Um and it's the thought process is that if you're a certain complexion, if your complexion is darker, or if you were born into a working family, you will never achieve, yep. you know, going yeah. higher. So it's like, and, yeah, yeah, it's a lot. So I think that's why they resonate. And this is one of their older songs, obviously. And okay. so I think this is, songs like this to me are like, everyone talks about BTS as like a boy band or like a pop group. But like mm-hmm. these type of songs, I think, are how they built the like foundation of their fan base right that is that is what carries them you mm-hmm. know what i mean all right so this is the performance of it and i do want to show you both a so you could hear the whole song because he chops it up okay and b because it's a very lit song okay <laughs> and, and b because the dance which i believe was mostly choreographed by j-hope actually reflects the lyrics so you'll okay. see like the concept of the the crow tit, the bird, like okay. in the dance music and the other things that they do, the dance. J Hope, cause I am your hope. Before we get started with this, I know I'm watching this for the message, but like I'm really getting hyped for just the visual. No, that's why I wanted you to hear the song too. And just the dancing, it's just like the political thing. message is part of it. But the other thing about this song is it is fire. Yeah. Like when I saw this live, I was I lost my mind. Yeah, I was like getting hyped <laughs> just watching the breakdown, even though it was being chopped up. Yep. But like, yep, you're gonna love it. I already know you're gonna love it. Yeah. <laughs> 
First of all, just off the bat, they look like they're being like petty level, like a thousand, like petty wop, yep. petty label, yep. petty, yep. like all yep. of that. I could just yep. see like the sarcasm <laughs> and the pettiness just flowing from their. Isn't their it done fashion so fashion. well? Yeah, Even the way they're like everything. literally thrusting. Yes. Like, that's not a boy band thrust. That's no. them being like cute. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I see all the petty, all, all of the petty is coming out. <laughs> Like just look at him. Yeah. <laughs> like he's a hardy old man. He never does it very good in live. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> And you can tell he's really because this is really, him. yes. You can tell like, that this is this is really going. This in. is Sugar's life. Yes. You know, like he, <laughs> he is going in. He is a Daegu boy. Oh. I don't know if we've talked about Daegu, but like the people from Daegu are very much like savage. Very like he's savage. <laughs> I don't want like rough, like right. but like in a good way. I don't mean that. In right. way. You know who else is from Daegu? Is Key. Oh yes. <laughs> Learn Korean then. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Come on. Yes. He, <laughs> yes. I just love him. <laughs> and get my back. <laughs> and get my back on that. So. Yeah. yeah. It says it all, right? Like it's, it's. That's why I was like, this goes with what you yeah, wanted to talk about. Yeah, sure. it, it does. Um, and I think for me, what I liked about. Um, Sky Castle was that yes they focus on the children but what I liked about it is that 
the focus more so was on the adults and how the yeah. adults contributed to where the children were, how they acted, just, you know, like why they were the way they were. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that I kind of like looked at was American TV shows around school. 